Hello everyone and welcome to morning coffee break. I hope everybody's doing good this morning. I overslept. Of course I didn't really oversleep. I, I slept until 9. Kitty woke me up at 6. And then uh, I fell back to sleep later on. About before 7 I think. and uh, Slept until 9. But see I, I've been doing this early because I've had, had my uh, painter coming over uh, about by about 10 and then I just couldn't get going and I was out there looking at the garden and he, he pulled up so he's working right there uh, by the garage and stuff where I do this out there so I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable or anything uh, matter of fact I think he's doing something right there but anyway uh, today's Wednesday June 2nd Currently it's 66 degrees, high today is 77, no chance of rain today, it's going to be raining the next day or so. Uh, humidity is 70%, wind is zero, air quality is 31, and that's in a good range. I'm gonna hold on just a minute. Okay, anyway, uh, I did that. Today will be the preview of the review show because tomorrow it will be Logan's Awesome Snack Reviews. So I'll go over the nutrition facts and show you the things that we'll be trying. <clears throat> Today's thumbnail is a turkey club sub and fries from Buck Deli. And y'all, it was really, really good. Uh, we love their fries this time. Sometimes they, they, they're they supposed to put seasoning salt on them. Sometimes if they're real busy, they don't put it on there. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, they put it on there just right last night, so the seasoning on the fries made them even better. They're the best fries in town. And we like to support local business, too, as much as we can. What's for dinner tonight? Oh, we're going to have the street tacos. We got nine of them left. That'd be three each. We figure that's about about perfect, you know, enough for a meal. I might have to get some more, but I think they're off sale now. I, I'd say they're off sale because the, the ad, new ad comes out on Wednesday. So snooze, you lose, right? Because I think they're like a dollar ninety nine when they weren't on sale, and they were ninety nine cents. But they're really soft. They're just the right thickness. See what I mean? So what we're gonna do is like fix our plates and put the like a the fajita mix like that we make on, in the skillet and then put some sour cream and some shredded cheese and then some uh, I got some quesadilla cheese in there that I got and uh, some salsa or anything else you want on it and uh, then you just put your you know tacos and just fix your fix them as you go so I think that'd be a good way to do it so and then we're gonna have some uh, Spanish rice I think it's El Monterey brand I think that's what it is I'm pretty sure uh, and uh, we got it down at grocery outlet so that sounds good okay uh, today's question of the day do you like Mexican food? We love it. We we have it. I try to have something uh, like a Mexican dish uh, maybe once a week. I was uh, talking to Joy last night. We need to fix some chili. Uh, or I need to fix some. I fix it in the crock pot. It's so good. And you can't even tell that you're using... I mean, I guess, you know, if you weren't used to it, you'd probably be able to tell the difference using uh, ground turkey instead of ground beef. But I know ground beef is really good, but I, you know, for our diet, Logan, and especially mine, and of course, Joy, um, you know, needs good nutrition. But uh, th that's what we've been using because it's uh, a lot less fat in it and stuff. So uh, I need to make a pot. That stuff's really good and have some cornbread. Mm. Okay, I'm making myself hungry. Okay, that's the question. Do you like Mexican food? And it's time for today's tidbits. Oh, and by the way, I have a Dollar Tree haul 
that I'll be uh, uploading today. Okay, let's see. Gotta get this prepared. I should have already done this, really. Okay. Get my glasses. Move my street taco. I mean, uh, tortillas. Okay. Cyprus tops the list of cleanest water spots in EU. According to the European Environmental Agency's rankings for the summer swim season, Cyprus received a perfect score of 100% for excellent water quality at 112 swimming spots across the islands in the Mediterranean. This timely ranking is expected to bring more holiday makers back to Cyprus, which completely plunged last year. I bet a lot of these places hurt bad. I'm sure Myrtle Beach and Cotopaxi, an active volcano in Andes Mountains. Sorry about the glare in here. Uh, Cotopaxi is one of South America's most active and famous volcanoes. This majestic snow-covered volcano in the Andes, Andes Mountain, is that how you say it? Mountains near Latacunga, Ecuador, is one of the world's highest volcanoes. It's also the second highest summit in Ecuador at a height of 5,897 meters. Multiply that by three for foot, uh, feet. Since 1738, it has erupted more than 50 times. So that would be almost like 17,000 uh, feet, something like that. And Mount McKinley or whatever we were talking about is like 21,000. So that tells you something. Aitken Basin, largest crater in the solar system. The South Pole Aitken Basin is a gigantic crater impact structure on the far side of the moon. It is one of the largest and oldest impact features in the solar system. The oval-shaped basin is as wide as 1,600 miles and 8.1 miles deep, stretches across nearly a quarter of the moon's circumference. If you hear something, it's, he's scraping the old paint off out there. Oh, I did that. Okay, the stunning basalt column canyon in Iceland. Uh, Stulagil Canyon in East Iceland is one of the world's most stunning basalt rock formations. They appear manufactured rather than the result of solidified lava. The ba this basalt column canyon was revealed only in 2006 when the waters of the Jaluska, Jalusa Glacial River receded due to the construction of the Halston Reservoir. Wow, so it was underwater. Arizona's Petrified Forest with Rainbow Hues. The Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona is renowned for its brilliantly colored petrified logs scattered throughout the region. Petrification is a process when woods get transformed into a stony substance, but floods uprooted and buried the trees in this once lush landscapes, which then got petrified into quartz of rainbow colors. Wow. I bet that's, I bet that is pretty. New Orleans cleans catch basins before hurricane season. Before the start of the Atlantic hurricane season, which started on June 1, New Orleans, Louisiana cleaned 1,002 catch basins, storm sewer inlets that filter out debris, one of the more than 70,000 in the city. About 98,605 feet of drain line have been flushed so far in 2021. Over the same period in 2020, crews had cleaned 2,806 basins. So they had done more? Because they only done 1,002 so far, so it don't seem like they're ready to me. Looks like you've got a long way to go. Unusual side bloom outbreak seen on Saguros in Arizona. Cactus experts are tracking unusual outbreak of side blooms in Saguros across Arizona this year. 
Sagurus blooming is reported in places from the Phoenix area to San Carlos, Mexico. Some sagueros are sporting crowns of flowers that are tightly packed and that are tightly packed than usual. Though the exact cause is unclear, experts believe it could be due to drought. Hmm. Bay of Fundy, world's largest tidal range. A tidal bore is a wave that occurs along a west, along a coast where a river empties into an ocean or sea. The Bay of Fundy's high tide sends a tidal bore up the Salmon River, Canada. Uh, its tides can reach up to 16 meter height and also has the world's largest tidal range of about 17 meters. These tides occur because of the bay's unique funnel shape. Hmm. Alexa's scary prediction for Florida in 2025, and she activated when I said that I didn't think about it. Here's something I found on the web. According to GulfShoreBusiness.com, the seven-county southwest Florida region is predicted to have at least a 20% shortfall by 2025. Okay, so it didn't say... Uh, hmm. I didn't, I shouldn't have said the word... Anyway, in a talk when Tick in a video when TikTok creator John Buckhouse asked his A L E X A what will happen in Florida in 2025, the device gave a scary but realistic reply. A L E X A stated that Florida would be hit by a category five hurricane with winds as high as two hundred and five mile per hour on September 4, 2025 at three oh eight PM. The device also stated that Miami would be completely destroyed in 2025. Now that's kind of weird. And then lastly, these iconic animals under climate change threat. Worldwide Fund for Nature has warned that wildlife ranging from bluebells and bumblebees to snow leopards and emperor penguins are under threat from climate change. WWF Irv to restrict global temperature rises to 34.7 F and limit the damage to nature and people. WWF said that sea turtles, corals, and hippos are also under threat. Yeah, climate change can will mess up a lot of things. So, everybody, that's it for today's tidbits, and that's going to be it for this morning's coffee break. A little shorter version. I wasn't able to, to go out and do my normal stuff outside, but... I don't want to, you know, make my painter feel uncomfortable. He might not paint. So, <laughs> all right, everybody. I'll, I'll try to get out there earlier tomorrow morning. Um, everything, I did get a chance to look at everything. Everything's looking good. The the one, the new bed out there, what what I, what I we think, of, I was talking to Joe about it and stuff. Uh, what we think is happening is there's a layer of peat on the bottom. And we didn't know. I, you know, I was standing right there when my brother put it in there, and uh, we didn't think it'd be. We thought it would help to put some peat down there, but anyway, the the peat doesn't have any nutrients in it. It's sterile. They sterilize it, I guess. And uh, so what what I think's happening is the roots. When the roots are getting down to that layer of peat on the bottom, they're not getting any nutrients. So that's why they're turning yellow. We think. So I'm hoping all we have to to do or all I have to do and I did a test yesterday is put some you know liquid miracle grow mixed up you know uh, put some out there and put it on a, some test subjects I put it on a couple the zucchini and a couple eggplant see if that has any uh, effect and uh, if that's the case I might just need to start feeding it with feeding all of them with miracle grow because there's fertilizer in the soil but I think the roots are reaching down into the peat and they're not really getting any nutrients so um, I'm also going to check the pH of the soil today I don't know what can be done to change the pH much but at least it might give us an answer if that's what the problem is because the peat is acidic it could change the pH of the soil so kind of technical but you know if things don't grow that well maybe I can learn uh, and I might have to get that peat out of there somehow for next year I don't know I'll figure it out so 
All right, everybody, please press that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. And share with someone today, please. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you later on, uh, well, I'll have the Dollar Tree haul, and then after that, later on, I'll have the preview of the review show. So, check it out later on, everybody. And I have a short, also, um, uh, which I don't really count, like, as a video, because they're less than a minute. But, uh, they are videos, you know, but they're just so short. Um... We we did one. We turned on the lantern out there that I bought at Dollar Tree. Now I want another one. And uh, the little string lights, they're flowers, flower shapes. We turned them on last night and sat out there, and I just did a short. So I'll throw that out there sometime today, the Dollar Tree haul, and preview of the review. Bye, everybody. We'll see you later on. God bless.